I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, this is Jason Dean with the Joe Blow Movie Network. A wise man once said, with great mustache comes great responsibility. Or at least I think that's how it goes. So let's count down our top 10 favorite movie mustaches. Number 10 is George Clooney from Oh Brother Where Art Thou. What's unique about this one is how subtle it is to his character. It's obviously meticulously cared for and trimmed in that design and helps establish certain character traits we can draw about him as soon as we meet him on screen. And it's also weird to see Clooney with a mustache at all. Number 9 is the mustache that helped define the look and brand of one of the biggest actors from the 80s. Tom Selleck has worn his trademark mustache for his entire career, and I don't know if we have ever seen him professionally without it. Here we see him in Three Men and a Baby, rocking his dark, bushy symbol of male sexuality. Number 8 is a mustache that exists just for laughs. Ben Stiller plays White Goodman, the over-the-top fitness enthusiast of Globo Jim in the slapstick comedy Dodgeball. His character is rocking this ridiculous handlebar mustache, presumably to give the impression of his hypersexualized nature. On someone else, it may have been too much, but Stiller actually rocks it pretty well. Number seven is a mandatory element of the character Captain Hook in the Disney live-action take on Peter Pan, Hook. Dustin Hoffman played the titular villain opposite Robin Williams' Peter Pan. As villains go, not only do you need a mustache, but you need a twirly-end mustache to truly sell this Disney version of a classic villain, and it works here perfectly for that very reason. Number six is Sasha Baron Cohen playing one of his many movie personas, Borat. Cohen is known for slipping into character and never breaking it until he's done. To do this for Borat, he actually grew this mustache for this role and kept it consistent for the entirety of production. I am pretty sure Cohen and the producers owe a debt of gratitude to that mustache for really selling the character. Number five is Ron Burgundy, played by Will Ferrell in Anchorman. Taking place in the 1970s meant the newsman must have the classic Tom Selleck-style mustache to help the audience know what time period this is in. Even though he's rocked a mustache for other characters, there was just something about how he paired this one up with the newsman hairpiece that worked perfectly. Another mustache in this movie worth mentioning is that of Brian Fantana, played by the hilarious Paul Rudd. Number four needs very little introduction when it comes to classic movie mustaches. If you think of classic mustaches in Hollywood and you aren't thinking of Tom Selleck, then you have to default to Burt Reynolds. And when you think of Burt Reynolds, you automatically think of Smokey and the Bandit. His stash with as much as part of his character brand as his trademark laugh. Is there such a thing as a method mustache? Maybe, if you're Daniel Day-Lewis. I of course say that in jest, but at the same time, how can any actor twirl their mustache up at the ends in the typical classic fairy tale villain style, and yet still be taken seriously as a corrupt gang leader in 1800s era New York City? Daniel Day-Lewis and his mustache are at number three in the Scorsese epic, Gangs of New York. Number two is an actor who is frequently seen with a heavy mustache, but not always, particularly when he was younger. Kurt Russell went full-on western with his thick near handlebar mustache in the classic western Tombstone. No makeup required for him, he grows that thing out on an as-needed basis. And another honorable mention from that movie is Val Kilmer's thin mustache as Doc Holliday, which was extremely unusual for his look as an actor. But then again, Bill Paxton even rocked a thin mustache to try to compete with Russell and his other on-screen brother Sam Elliott. Speaking of Sam Elliott, who else in the world puts the must in mustache like he does? Elliott embodies the very essence of a man's man with his rich baritone southern drawl voice, his thin gangly cowboy appearance, and of course the gray bushy mustache. Our favorite version of which is actually from his narrator character from The Big Lebowski. In this final segment, it's amazing that we can even hear him speak because the mustache has clearly hidden his entire mouth from view. With its density and coverage, you would think the best we could get is a muffled speech, but yet it still works regardless. So there's our top favorite movie mustaches. Tell us down below which one is your favorite. I'm Jason Dean for the Joe Blow Movie Network, and thanks for watching.